Today we're going to talk about energy. When I usually ask my students, what do you think of when you think of energy, the most common response is something like this. Where they think of solar panels, wind, they think of petroleum and natural gas, coal, nuclear power plants, um, they think of geothermals, things like that. Um, in short, they say something like electricity. Now, while that's certainly true, that that is a big part of energy, that it's not exclusively it. There's a lot more to energy than just that. So today we want to talk about all the different kinds of energy and how that's all related. First of all, <clears throat> when you talk about the definition of energy, and you'll probably remember from your junior high classes, the definition that energy is the ability to do work, where work is your force times distance. While that's certainly true, I don't really care for that definition too much. It just doesn't tell us anything about energy. So instead, I like to use this definition, that energy is a conserved substance-like quantity with the capability to produce change. I know some of you are probably just scratching your heads, thinking, what? That doesn't sound any easier to understand. And OK, I, I confess, it's not a very simple definition, but it is more adequate. If you need something more simple, let's just think of an analogy. Think of a bank where it has all sorts of different types of accounts. And you can transfer your money between all the different accounts. We have checking accounts, certificates of deposits, savings accounts, money markets, stocks, bonds, IRAs, Roth IRAs, 401ks. Even your health insurance can be a type of bank account where you can loan money from yourself. Um, anyway, so all these different types of bank accounts. Well, we can just write a check and transfer money between all the different types of accounts. So energy is much like that, where it's like the money that can be transferred between all the different accounts by doing work. Now, the different types of energy that it can be stored in is kinetic energy, gravitational, elastic, and dissipated. Those four are the main four that we'll talk about. We have equations for those uh, that we'll solve numerically. These last three here, chemical, nuclear, electromagnetic, uh, there's a lot more than this. These are just three that I came up with off the top of my head, but there's so many different types of energy. But like I said, we're going to concentrate on these four types of energy. So like the bank accounts, we can transfer energy between each of these different types, or we can transfer energy between all these different types of energy. Now, talking about work, what is that exactly? It's just the way that we convert energy. So if you went to the bank to, uh, to transfer money, you'd need to fill out some paperwork, and they would transfer the money for you. So that paperwork is work and you're transferring the energy between the different accounts. Now there's a simple equation for work, and it's work is equal to force times distance. Now this is a really simple equation, but you need to be careful and use some caution. You can only use this equation if there's two conditions that are met, and both of them have to be met. Number one, the force has to be constant, and number two, the force is in the same direction as the motion. Now, talking about these two, if a force is not constant and things are changing, well, how would you know what force to plug in into the equation? If the force is always changing, it's not any one number to plug in. So that one makes sense. And also, the force needs to be in the same direction. Well, let's think of a, uh, an example. Think about if you're driving in a car along this straight road, and there's a huge wind storm that's blowing through. And I don't know if, if, if any of you have driven with really big crosswinds where the wind is blowing sideways, uh, but it's pretty tough and it can be kind of nerve wracking. The car is swaying back and forth and you're always correcting your direction by steering. Uh, and so a lot of times students would say, well, no, the wind is doing something. It's pushing the car. But really, we need to look at it at the end of the day. What did that wind really accomplish on the car? The car still went straight. The winds didn't really push it to the side. And as long as it wasn't too strong and rolled the car, uh, just had no effect. So we can think of it kind of in that terms, that what did that force actually accomplish? Here's another example of work <coughs> that might clarify a little bit more. Imagine you go out and you slave in the hot sun all day, digging a really big hole. And you spend all day digging this hole. And then at night, you fill it back up again. And so now there's no more hole. Well, how much work did you do? Well, you might think, oh yeah, I did a lot of work. I spent all day digging this hole. But what did you accomplish? You know, nothing really happened. 
Uh, it's the exact same as it was when it began. There was no real effect from that. So because of that, that's why the force needs to be in the same direction. It's kind of like saying, if the force isn't in the direction of the motion, then that force didn't accomplish anything, so there was no work done. Now, it is possible to have uh, forces that are diagonal, and in that case, we take the component of that that's in the same direction. We use Sokotoa. And we'll talk more about this, but you know, you have your up and down component and the left and right component, so it's whatever component is in the right direction, you take that one. Now, let's talk about all the different types of energy we have. First of all, kinetic energy. This is an energy of motion. Anything that's moving has energy. And that's kinetic energy. So cars that are moving, planes that are flying, people that are running, anything that's moving has energy. And the equation that we use <coughs> is that kinetic energy is equal to one-half times the mass times velocity squared. Um, one-half of the mass times v squared. Just need to remember that. Write that down on your 3 by 5 card. Um, so if I give you any airplane or car, give you the mass, give you the velocity, you just plug it in, and that will tell you how much energy that object has. The next kind of energy that we want to talk about is called gravitational energy. It's also known as potential energy. I don't really like the phrase potential energy because it's really vague. There's actually a lot of different types of potential energy, um, like elastic energy, which we'll talk about in just a moment. That's actually a type of potential energy. <coughs> also, uh, chemical energy can be a potential energy. So it's a really vague type. Uh, so I really don't refer to it as poten potential energy very often. But sometimes we do. 95% of the time, if you see something called just potential energy, it's most likely gravitational. Now, this kind of energy is a energy of position. Just by being somewhere, you might have some energy. Well, if that sounds confusing, let me just give you this little example. We look at this big rock that's hanging out on top of the cliff. And these guys on top of the cliff, they give it just the tiniest, smallest little nudge. And the rock falls all the way down and lands and splashes into the lake. Well, the guys only gave it a small little nudge. They did a little bit of work, but not a lot. The rest of the work came from gravity pulling it down. So gravity did all of that work to pull it down into the lake. So there was that energy before that's stored inside the rock because it's up really high and as it falls that potential or gravitational energy is converted into kinetic energy as it moves down. Now the equation that we need to use for gravitational is a really simple one that just says that gravitational energy is equal to mgh mass times gravity times the height. Uh, the gravity remember on earth is always 10 and the height is just how high up the object is and how far it can fall. Now, um, the la uh, next energy that we want to talk about is elastic energy, which we mentioned just a little bit. This is energy that's stored in elastic substances like springs, rubber bands, bouncy balls, that kind of a thing. When you stretch out the rubber band and then you release it, you can see that it releases all that energy and transfers into kinetic energy and flies. <coughs> the equation that we use for elastic looks really familiar. It's one-half times k times x squared. And it looks familiar for two reasons. Number one, remember the spring force equation, f equals k times x, and here we have k and x again. And then if you think about the kinetic energy equation, it's one-half mv squared. So it has the same formula, the same, same format, just different letters. So I don't know if that's more or less confusing for you, but I always remember it, that the elastic is just that cross between the kinetic and elastic, the spring force equation. Uh, and it looks really similar. It's easy to remember because it's almost identical. The last kind of energy we want to talk about today is dissipated energy. Uh, this is... Uh, there's not really an equation for this one, but we will solve for it numerically. And the dissipated energy is just energy that's lost. Uh, it goes out into space somewhere. Most frequently, we'll use examples where it's dissipated due to friction and heat or sound. Uh, dissipated energy isn't destroyed. It's just in an unusable form. Uh, dissipated means that uh, we've lost our energy, and it's not in a form where we can grab it and collect it and bring it back in. 
Now, we'll learn about the conservation of energy in a, uh, in a couple of days, but the basic idea is that energy can't be destroyed or created. They just transfer to different types. So dissipated is just one of these types where it's transferred to there, and it's just lost and gone forever. Uh, no way of getting it back. Last thing I want to talk about is just the units. Now, there's a man that lived quite a long time ago named James Jewell, who was an early pioneer in, in energy. He discovered a lot about energy, and much of what we know is due to what he discovered. Uh, for that reason, we've named the unit of energy after him because of all of his hard work. So it's called a Joule, a capital J. If you paid attention in some of the other equations, like in, in the uh, work equation, that work equals force times distance, force times distance is newtons times meters, and that's actually the exact same thing. A newton meter is a joule. We just renamed it because we see newton meters all the time. So that concludes it for today's lesson on energy. Uh, hopefully uh, that all made sense to you. We'll talk about this in class. We'll do some examples together. You can ask me questions about um, what we've learned, but you might want to go back and record all those equations. You'll need those. Um, go back and look at all the different types of energy. Uh, think about work and that equation uh, and be ready for class the next time.